saw a Pentega being delivered. Let's go have a look. There you go! Whoa! Delivery ah? Okay. Ah, okay, okay. So far, the first thing is, it's quite comfortable. Um, the ride is reasonable for a traditional SUV. It feels like a traditional SUV. Thank you. It doesn't feel like those, you know, super overly sporty Cayennes and all that. And my first correlation that I can link this car to is this the Mercedes ML class before it's facelifted. Uh, the one that they, you know, debuted in 2011 or 12 or something like that. It feels very similar to that. Of course, that one is slightly more comfortable, slightly better wind soundproofing. But it just feels like it. There's nothing particularly alarming about the car. It's not overly sporty like an X6, and then you start exploring its handling, or it's overly wallowy that you remind yourself to not take a corner. It's not like that. You just drive. You just drive, and the steering is chunky. It's not the best steering. It feels. Uh, they you know they try to add friction to give you the sensation of weight which means it's just a dead steering it's like a, it's a something dead you move here it's there then it slowly comes back you move here it's there then it slowly comes back yeah that's that's how it feels um, and what else driver position is offset that happens to a lot of left left hand drive cars so it's offset uh, what else and um, yeah, this gear even looks like the one in the uh, A8. Wait, wait, uh. I think we should continue. What the fuck? <sighs> See, this is the problem with Malaysians. There's only like two cars behind me, and he decided he wants to, you know, just. What the fuck is wrong with you? Ayo. Oh well. Okay, this is the compartment where you can find the auxiliary, the USB and the SD card. And of course the cigarette lighter. Um it's very nice, it's well padded, and there is a deeper compartment inside. Which is, you know, this is the part where I'm banging against the SD card and all that. And then on top I can actually fit my phone in, which is good. Um, but I think the I guess they they want you to leave your entire phone in there. Again, the problem is this: when you plug in your when you when you have an iPhone six plus or some Galaxy Note, is it the big one? After you plug it in, it's not wide enough for you to put uh, horizontally. But if you were to put vertically, it's not deep enough. So, um, barely, maybe? Anyway, um, granted, even with that, I, I suppose maybe it's intentional that they don't want to leave any opening for the wiring to run through. They want you to, you know, hook up your phone and leave it in there. Right? Safe and sound. Don't take it out. It's illegal. You get killed. You know, the moment you hold your phone, everyone will be, will be dead in the next five seconds. This is why, but there's not a lot of compartments. There's two tiny cup holders and um, it is molded in a way to you know, properly hold cups and not much else. There's an opening in between, but it uh, doesn't really help much. Small niggling, but I, I kind of felt that this place is a bit wasted. They could have, you know, allowed us to accommodate more things, cubby holes and all that. But but I'm not sure because I'm not that familiar with their design their ideology if they have one. You know, like BMW, they also don't like you to put your linger your stuffs around. They want you to put down the door pockets or, or anywhere. I don't really understand Jeep's one because the previous Jeep I drove is an iconic Jeep. Jeep. 
the Wrangler. So that one, of course, they don't apply the modern interior design. But anyway, from the looks of this, I don't think they have sort of like a family language, a design direction for their interior because it looks very generic, it looks very usable, very practical. That's it. Now, I mentioned just now that when I when I went in the car, I kind of felt that, like this car feels not like not like it feels. Uh, I was trying to find another car that I can draw a parallel with, and I I mentioned the the Mercedes M Class, and you know what I I went and uh, googled a bit about this car earlier on. It's based on the same platform as the M Class. No wonder it has that kind of demeanor. Um, it's it's soft and comfortable, uh, not super wallowy, but and it's not something that inspires you know uh, great confidence in terms of it, it. It's not designed to set out to do that. No, it's not. It's not an X5. It did not pretend to be. It's not an XC90. It did not pretend to be. This is just. It's a bit frustrating. No wonder that. Not very smart Americans went into trouble with this. Now this steering is is a hydraulic rack, but uh, now it has it has the weight of a hydraulic system. It has none of the the I, I wouldn't go feedback. It's not a sports car, okay? Um, it's how they should react physically, right? As you move along the, the the wheel should spring back and all that uh unfortunately no it is weighted it's chunky nice to hold but you you need some effort to turn a little bit and then you need some effort to turn it back yeah uh but i like the turning circle you can make a u-turn with uh it's really surprisingly agile in terms of you know figure eights or u-turn is nice in terms of the maneuverability very good um i talk about that i don't know is this genius or cost cutting let me see because they managed to put they solve everybody's problem i guess they managed to put the uh lighting control signal indicators and wipers and everything on one stock does this sound familiar? Yes, Mercedes tag here. Now, Mercedes put everything under one stock, and here we have another stock here for the, the transmission stock for Mercedes, PRND, right? You press and then you go up and down. I think that is brilliant because that actually frees up space over here and allows a lot for a lot of compartment storage and all that. But of course, now that Mercedes and Chrysler has split apart, and they want their own uh, identity and they saw that beautiful gear knob from the current Audi A8 it looks exactly the same you know. and they, they use it but in terms of operating it's a bit frustrating because okay, now I can't move I press a bit I can go down to R down to N I can go to D from D I can go to R I know, I know. Anyway, it's. I think it takes some getting used to, but it's nowhere near as intuitive as BMW system. You know, BMW's gear store right, is quite amazing. You look at it, right? It's like, whoa! It's like some Ultraman with a batang or something like that. At first, uh, back then, right? And then, the first time you went into it, you try to figure it out. And then you, you can totally master it in your second drive. It's so intuitive, but it's something that no one has done before. But now it has become the industry standard. Everybody has changed their gear stocks to what BMW did. Remember back then, everybody was doing Mercedes's gated shift because they, they, they don't know how else to do it. And Mercedes came up with that. Everybody adopted that. And I think BMW... Yeah, make the next logical step. All right, done with that. Uh, full off-road capabilities, like all Jeep does. So yes, this car might be four hundred sixty thousand. Um, most of its 
premium competitors are another hundred thousand, but in terms of full off-road capabilities, you have to we have to go uh, Land Rover, Discovery Sport, or Range Rover Sport. Range Rover Sport will be like super expensive already. Um, yeah, it has that, but in the US, back in the US, this is not exactly a premium car. I would just call it. It's supposed to be uh, the levels of Toyota in 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 US. So it it shows in. I mean, it's a decent interior. There's not a single surface that is low rent. Even the the bottom door panels, they feel proper high quality plastic. Um, Lexus NX down here cheap plastics uh, RX has a bit as well so this one doesn't but it's evident one thing is the precision of fit and finish I mentioned again and again there is a difference between material quality and fit and finish all right uh, Hyundai they have they their cars are not expensive so they don't really use really expensive materials in their interior but the fit and finish is excellent. It's superb. Uh, Hyundai. And uh, Audi, of course, uh, one of the industry standards when it comes to fit and finish. What we mean by fit and finish is, you know, look at this. This is um, plastic. This is some wood look-alike or real wood. I don't care. Uh, and then there's a chrome strip here. There's another piece here. First of all, the designer of this interior already shows a weakness in his part whereby um, it's never too good to have too many things conjoined at, at the same spot and then it leaves plenty of gaps for the eyes, you know. But of course, if you are Audi, you are able to put them so well together or Porsche for that matter. Let's not talk about Bentley or Aston Martin or the others that, you know. So it, it, it shows you like this piping runs here and then there is a gap against this which is wider than this but this part was very tight but here is wider and then this part is you know yeah it could have just end the panel here and don't be so ambitious about you know flowing in I look at the new 7 series if you check out this part how the wood curves in and blends seamlessly into the plastic right it's amazing the way they, they do it is just brilliant. You show it to these Americans, right? They might go like, wow, wow, how do we do that? And this part as well, the plastics and this. Again, I don't want to nitpick uh, because let's just put it this way. In terms of absolute fit and finish, the Americans are not really famous for that. But proper leather dashboard, proper high quality plastics used and gigantic glove box double layer not sure how to go about it fuck ow I forget about it um, gigantic glove box oh no it's blocked off here ha, so it's not gigantic decent 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 um, door pockets again I don't like door pockets that are not full length this is somewhat but then for no reason it's slim off towards the end and uh, inside even though it's not padded but it's it's of super high quality plastics so it's not the type whereby you get stuff going around it, it will but you can you can hear if I try to it's a bit muted because it's high quality plastic there are coatings on it all right there's panoramic roof. Uh, let me turn you guys a bit around here. Or maybe I can drop this seat. Yeah, this shows the width of the car. Anyway, uh, there is a panoramic roof, which I really appreciate. Um, SUVs like this, family SUVs like this, right? You need to have panoramic roof, uh, especially over a certain price point, because it, it just feels great. And one commendable brand for really popularizing this is Peugeot. Peugeot, you guys are the heroes, you know. Ouch. 
your 308 turbo with panoramic roof and then your 5008 with panoramic roof uh, I forgot 3008 whether you have it but you show Malaysians how beautiful our cities are and after you experience panoramic roof right you wouldn't buy a car without it because it just makes the cabin feel so airy feel so um, comfortable and of course the natural lighting and all that um, rear seats are very comfortable go to the back alright the rear seats are spacious as I mentioned this is a sort of like a pseudo full size SUV and yeah it's I have plenty of headroom leg room I can stop my feet under I can do this and um, sorry not very chanted my leg I, I appreciate it it's, it's very nice let me bring you guys here I'll just do editing maybe here we'll do yes all right see it's very spacious armrest this is the not so changi type lah, huh? one piece of cushion and then two lubang but uh, you know some good ones where you press and it comes out plastic bits and all that and all that and then this one can open yes um, what I mentioned just now that one it was available in the in the Audi A4 and the previous Passat B7 nice big compartment then you press here the cup holders come out uh, expensive piece of kit that is heavy and chunky and solid but unfortunately sometimes kids will break the the lids and all that so in the b8 passat something like that big piece of cushion to lubang that's it anyway uh the seats are the seats are all right there are two usb ports down here there is what i call the ball cooler if you see it oh wow okay um not many cars right have the middle rear seat that is perfectly okay i think this one is one of the best middle rear seat that i've experienced of course if it's three bobby ang then you'll be sort of cramped but it's, it doesn't like you know shh being contoured in a way that is like super deep and then this one is super heightened so that I'll be doing that in the middle no no it's nice and the center tunnel is the center tunnel isn't tall this is a full flash four wheel drive and the center tunnel is like it's like that it's like that tall so it is the kind of center tunnel where you can put your 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 heels on the tunnel and then your your toes on the floorboard because it's it's only this high this this tall it's not like those you know super chunky and um i can even put my feet in front of the ball cooler very nice oh another thing i like about this this is the overland spec or something like that i have no idea about jeeps uh various um terminology or nomenclature about their different specs but I like the leather. It's a, uh, I like the pipings, the pipings that runs across this. These are very premium looking, you know, pipings. And um, what does the pipings do? They hide the stitches towards the end and it protects book two, two pieces of leather after they're stitched together, right? These are the stress points and then the piping actually protects it. Looks very good. Some dark gray blue with dark bronze brown combination with white pipings it's the kind of color where if you do not study these sort of design right you can never imagine that it will come out good looking you know if someone tells you hi i'm gonna do you leather seats with dark gray blue with dark bronze brown and white piping you'll be like what the fuck are you saying right so but it works out well okay um yeah I think, that, yeah, that's the rear. Nice. Nice. I like the visibility. The visibility is great. 
even though this is high quality, it looks so aftermarket, you know. You know, most cars have some plastic tip, tip, tip or nipple, tip. What do you call that? Anyway, this is metal, but it, it looks so aftermarket. Even though it's high quality stuff, it just... Um, and yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a mixture of materials that you can see. All these are high quality, even if the fit and finish is... Uh, okay, it's not bad, it's not super bad. But this part is... This chrome is so out of date when it's next to this kind of metal... It's not metal, it's plastic, but it's painted to look like metal, uh, which Lexus is still using on their steering wheel. But the um, the new Fortuner, they've started using the satin chrome finish where they are able to plate metal onto plastics and make it look so real that your aircon band could make it cold. Those are the new types. <sighs> Yeah. Decent. 469,000. What car is similar to this in positioning? Um, the Hyundai Santa Fe. That one has another two seats at the back. But even though that interior is much better put together, right? It doesn't have... No, it's not close to this interior's feel, I would say. Hyundai, one thing with them is that, like, say for example, this car, right? They don't do unnecessary designs. Everything is very usable, very uh, user-friendly, and very logical. There's no unnecessary design. You can't find one in the cabin. Um, this is super cheap looking, uh, if it is some proper, you know, cover. I mean, they could have made this car look more premium by using all those little, small little bits, right? Uh, they could have done so. Now, let's go to the rear. It has power tailgate. Reverse camera. This looks really good and it's actually very hefty, very premium. There's a lot of storage here. Oh my god, a full size spare. I think that thing could have weighed like what, 50, 50 kilograms or 45 kilograms. Even if you puncture your tire, right, you won't be strong enough to bring it out, actually. Uh, there's a tonneau cover, but I don't see a tonneau cover holder. This is a torchlight. Uh, very good. Very handy. It's chargeable, and then you can on it. How do you on it? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. There you go. Okay. Lovely. But they could have used something more generic. Yeah, you can slide your luggages in now despite this being a tall car a big car um, I don't think the rear compartment is big and deep enough it's mainly taken up by this gigantic ginormous spare wheel and you look at this this is the opening and then after the opening there's one level after the level this sort of slopes upwards so you lost quite a bit of space in terms of height um, the opening is alright, it's not super large, it's it's only decently packaged I would say in terms of uh, interior design but it's usable, you have you know, some hooks, 12 volt chargers and all that but I don't see a tonneau cover holder so after you remove the tonneau cover it's very likely you have to you know place it at the foot well Americans being Americans, Jeep being Jeep there's a subwoofer here alright, okay this uses, ah lovely the powered strut on the left, a regular strut on the right. Clever. Don't don't there's no need to use two and then it's expensive and all that. This one you might see all the exposed hinges and all this, you know, the wires and all that. But let me tell you this, Mercedes as well. Uh, only Audi so far I noticed everything is covered in plastics. It covered even the hinges, you can't see the hinges. Audis are you know nicely covered. So uh, I think this is perfectly alright. Okay? Uh, yeah, to close is here because some ladies are very short, they can't reach the button here, so it's here. But after you press it, you need to run away. 
Alright, okay. Oh, I haven't shown you guys the exterior. Now, this is how it looks. It's a manly car. It's, it's definitely very... Uh, it's not garang, but it's just macho. La. I like how it looks, actually. I like the sculpt, sculpted surfaces and all that. And... Yeah, it's a handsome car. It's definitely a handsome car. But... Does it carry any Jeep heritage? Aside from the the waterfall grill, seven slaps and all that, doesn't. Hmm. Yeah, I think in the US it's just a mid sizer. Yeah. Handsome, but not pretty, not luxurious, not swanky enough, I guess. But it's a good looking car. Oh my god, it's making going crazy when I walked out of the car. Right? I'm not sure if you, you're able to see it. This is the you know the foot release brake that came from Mercedes-Benz, the design and all that. This is our regular brake, that's the throttle, right? After you release this, your foot is here, your left foot is here. And this thing, right, I tell you it's it keeps hitting on my leg as I move around. I I wish it could have come up a bit more. I'm not sure if it's adjustable, but so far it's just... I just don't like that. Yeah. So a BMW X3. And if you ever know about it, that car is huge in terms of interior room and all that. Of course, it doesn't come with air suspension, which this car has, you know, can, you can raise up and down. And then you have uh, all the terrain controls and all that. Uh, nevertheless, uh, there is something interesting about this car because it has air suspension, right? And then the uh, Jeep Wrangler doesn't. But the Jeep Wrangler has a fantastic suspension. There's no bump stops. It doesn't, you know, when you go over a speed bump too fast, right? The suspension might be like, it, it, it compresses too fast and then it goes back down and then you hit that boom. Um, this one does that, but the Jeep Wrangler doesn't. Um, interesting, but it's a full-fledged four-wheel drive system. It's very capable off-road. Um, uh, but the X3, if I'm not wrong, is 100,000 ringgit cheaper than this car. Because this car is not a seven-seater, all you get is a full-time four-wheel drive system and of course you want a comfortable interior will I pay hundred ring hundred thousand ringgit more from the X3 to this that's the big question of course the X5 is another hundred thousand ringgit off from this but I can't help but wonder what do I get in extra for that hundred thousand ringgit Yes, I get a full flash four-wheel drive system, which gives me the added ability if I am someone who, you know, who's a proper cowboy, you know, who does manly things, who go to the jungle and all that, and in the city, you know, it's, it's comfortable and big size, it's, you know, I think the interior room is larger than the X3, but by not by a big margin and of course this helps a lot right yeah